Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and earlier this week I put out a video on an issue that I'm having with my Starlink satellite dish. And in that video, I mentioned that I have Starlink plugged into a network switch, which comes through a VLAN all the way up here to my office. So I have it plugged into a switch in my garage, running through my network on its own VLAN up to a switch in my office. And a number of people asked, well, how did you do that? How are you doing that? So I wanted to take some time to explain it. Uh, VLANs, you know, right off the bat, VLANs are a little bit complicated, okay? It's one of the sort of more intermediate concepts that you need to be able to wrap your brain around in terms of computer networking. And this is even a little bit more complicated than that because this is not a VLAN that I created at the firewall level. It's completely segregated from all of the other VLANs that I have running in my network. So let's take a look at how I did this and I will try to explain it as best I can because again, VLANs can get complicated. Here is a diagram of, of part of my network. This is not everything that I have in my network, but this is a lot of the, this is anything that's involved in this VLAN thing that we talked about. So I have four main VLANs running through my network. I have my main LAN, that's where my, you know, sort of my secure LAN, you know, this computer that I'm recording on right now, as well as anything that I, uh, you know, typically use like access points and stuff like that. Those are on my main LAN. Then I have a VLAN 10, which is my guest network VLAN. Then I have VLAN 107, which is my IoT network VLAN. That's for, you know, home assistant and any of the IoT devices that I have running around the house, including, you know, televisions and Roku's and these lights that I have up here in this LED strip behind me. All of that stuff is on the IoT network segregated from the rest of the networks. Then I added this VLAN, VLAN 574. 574 is like STA in leet speak. That's why it's for Starlink. So the issue was I used to have a cable that ran out my window all the way across the roof and then down into the garage where I had Starlink plugged in directly. And I knew that I could run it through a VLAN, but it would be nice to have a separate cross connect all the way up to the office. I have not been able to get a separate cross connect all the way up to this office. so. Ultimately, I did decide to just put it in its own VLAN. So here's the different color codings of where stuff is run around the network. Something like this, where you see a, these four VLANs, all four VLANs are running between like my attic switch to this USW24 PoE. Essentially, that represents what's known as a trunk port. Or in unified terms, if you're familiar with unified, that is the all switch profile. Right, so when we're setting up VLANs, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Mostly, I have every VLAN running through almost every port in all of these switches as a trunk port or the all switch port profile in Unify. Three of my VLANs, so the blue, green, and red VLAN, originate here at my NetGate SG100 firewall. Uh, but notice that the yellow VLAN for Starlink, the 574 VLAN, is not in here. That's because in PFSense, I'll show you that now, here are my VLANs, right? I have VLAN 10, I have VLAN 107, and then this is, uh, 4091 is like the main VLAN. That's just a default that, uh, that you have in PFSense or the uh, NetGate SG1100 appliance. So I do not have the 574 VLAN in PFSense at all because it doesn't need to be there. It's totally separate. It doesn't need to have its own DHCP server for that network or anything like that. It was literally just a VLAN I created to get my Starlink connection over to the WAN interface of my edge router. So no VLAN 574 here, which means I only had to create the VLAN in Unify. So here we have Unify and I've got a number of VLANs including VLAN ID 574. So let's take a look at that VLAN. And it's very, very simple setup in Unify. I gave it a name, I checked VLAN only, and then I gave it a VLAN tag or a VLAN ID of 574. That's it, that's all you have to do in Unify and now you have access to that VLAN. Going back to my document now, here we can see, let's sort of just follow the line from start to finish. Here we have the Starlink satellite dish. That comes over here and it plugs into this Starlink PoE injector, the included power brick that comes with Starlink, which has two sides. It has one ethernet port that powers up the dish and a second ethernet port that goes out to my equipment. 
So we're basically running that second ethernet port directly into this USW Lite 16 PoE switch in my garage. What I've done on that PoE switch, the 16 port Lite PoE switch, is I made port five untagged for VLAN 574. Okay, so what does that mean? This is where we kind of get into the, some of the complicated stuff with VLANs. So here we can see the ports for that USW Lite 16 PoE. Notice that I'm still at 100 megabit full duplex because the Starlink issue has not been fixed yet. But if I edit this port, notice that the switch port profile for this particular port, port five on that switch, is set so that it's Starlink only, okay? What that means is that the Starlink VLAN, the 574 VLAN, is untagged on port five, meaning that anything that you plug into port five is going to be on that VLAN natively, meaning that there's, there's no like VLAN uh, smarts involved in that port. Anything that I plug into that port is going to be on the 574 VLAN and separate from everything else in the network. So in VLANs, you have your trunk port, which is basically all of your VLANs, one untagged, and then all of the rest of the VLANs are tagged, uh, meaning that if you take an access point or a computer or like a voice over IP phone or something like that and plug it into a trunk port, it will be able to be on the main untagged LAN or VLAN by default, but if it's smart enough to recognize VLANs, it could also be on one of the tagged VLANs if you've told that device to do that. So in the case of like an access point, you plug the access point into a trunk port or a port that has all of the VLAN profiles associated with it, and it's gonna get an IP address in the mainland, but it can also pass traffic on those other networks, which is how I have the guest network Wi-Fi, as well as the IoT network Wi-Fi running through a single access point plugged into a switch. In this case though, I'm not running all of my VLANs to that port, I'm only running the one VLAN to that port, and that way anything I plug into it is only gonna be on that one VLAN. It doesn't know anything about any of the other VLANs, nor if it was a device smart enough like an access point to recognize VLANs, it still wouldn't know anything about any of those VLANs because I have specifically set it up to only be the 574 VLAN for Starlink. Now, if we look at any of these other ports, like port 15, for instance, which is my uh, trunk port that goes to the other switch, notice that the switch port profile for port 15 is set to all. That means that it can transfer all of my VLANs. So let's go back to our diagram. So this comes into port five with just VLAN, just the yellow line here, which is VLAN 574. And then all of the VLANs travel from my garage all the way up into the switch in my attic, which then also has another port that transfers all of those VLANs to the US24 PoE switch that I have in this cabinet right behind me. That US24 PoE switch then has all of the trunk ports passed over here to the US8 150 watt switch that I have on the other end of my desk. And then that switch is configured so that again, port five is just the Starlink VLAN and it comes out into the WAN side of the Edge Router X. And then the LAN side of the Edge Router X is my, my Starlink LAN, right? So the, the internal network. So again, what we have here is a network specifically for Starlink running as a VLAN through other equipment that it has nothing to do with, right? So all of this other equipment doesn't know anything about that VLAN and really, I have this running as a trunk port, but if I were doing this in an enterprise capacity, I would segregate it even further. So what I would do is for any port that wasn't specifically a trunk port, like any port that I'm just gonna plug a VoIP phone into or an access point into, I would change the switch port profile so that instead of it being all, I would actually just 
only give it the, the VLANs that it needs, which would be my LAN, my guest network, and my IoT network. That would be like the best practice, you know, right way to do things. But since I'm just here in my home and I have full control all, over all the equipment, I'm not worried about plugging into something that's going to, you know, hop on VLAN 574 and take part in that Starlink uh, VLAN. But just for kicks, let's go ahead and set up a switch port profile in that manner for my other VLAN so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So in Unify, I'm going to go to Profiles, then I'm gonna click on Switch Ports, and then I'm gonna say Add New Port Profile, and we're gonna call this Non-Starlink VLANs. We're not gonna worry about the PoE stuff. The native network is gonna be LAN, and then we're just gonna select the 107 IoT network and my guest network. I'm not putting any other networks uh, that I have in this switch port profile, and we're gonna go ahead and say save. Now, if I go back to any of my devices, and let's open up the ports for, for instance, the USW, in, in, the USW Industrial that I have in my attic, we can see port eight is the U6LR, so my main access point. If I edit that, I should now be able to choose non-Starlink VLANs for that port. So again, the right way, the best practice way to do this would be to make that switch port profile and, and apply that switch port profile to every single port and every single switch except for the trunk ports between switches that actually do need to carry all of the VLANs or any port that I'm specifically setting as untagged for the Starlink uh, 574 VLAN. Alright, so that's basically how I did it and uh, yeah, it's I mean, even as I'm explaining it to the camera here, it's super confusing, right? Just because VLANs in general are super confusing. So don't worry if you didn't catch everything that I said. Uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those learning curve things that takes you a long time. Uh, and then eventually VLANs just kind of click and you understand how they all work. So if you guys have any questions about this, put it down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to answer any questions that come in. I right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.